spirituality. My name is Three Mansif West. If this is your first time watching this channel, you are highly, highly welcome. This is a place for separate facts from the fiction, the science from the superstitions, and the concepts from the misconceptions about African spirituality. Today, I'll be talking about a very, very important and controversial subject, which is uh, the topic of uh, ritual sex in African spirituality and, of course, of the phenomenon of uh, sacred prostitution. So, this is a topic that uh, have many gray areas, but uh, today I want to touch it and uh, so that we can really understand uh, what is going on in this topic, uh, what you can be able to expect from this kind of situation. You know, African spirituality, like all other kind of spirituality, we um, have the phenomenon of sex. As you know, sex is a very, very integral aspect of humanity. In fact, without the activity of sex, humans cannot survive and uh, nobody on this earth right now will be born. For any human being and any soul to come into this physical planet called Earth, two people must meet, a male and a female. They must have to meet each other in a, a very close, intimate contact. And uh, body fluids have to be exchanged. Exchange. They have to be passion and uh, they have to be released. And uh, nine months later, somebody will come out as a baby. This is a very, very important aspect of humanity. It is uh, something that uh, we cannot do with that. It is our nature to procreate. It is our nature to find companionship. It is our nature to, uh, to have families, to grow, to expand, to diversify. And uh, this is part of us. In uh, African spirituality, we have been able to develop a whole uh, aspect of practices around this very subject in order to continue uh, our survival and uh, our continuous growth, expansion, and uh, general living welfare. So uh, we have the institution that we call marriage in uh, African spirituality. Uh, we know that marriage is composed of a man and a woman, or a man and multiple women, or multiple women and a man. This is what we have known when it comes to the issue of sex. It is a uh, personal and discretionary, and uh, different tribes have different view on it. But uh, in African spirituality, and when you check our history, we have always maintained an heterosexual relationship. This is a relationship between a man and a woman coming together. Okay, man and woman relationship. Let me emphasize again male and female relationship so the trinity of african spirituality this is emphasized in our trinity which is represented by the hank it is the union of a man and a woman and a child because it's only when a man and a woman comes together that you will have a baby this is our divine truth this is what you're going to find in african spirituality this is the cornerstone the foundation the, the essence of our practice, a man and a woman and a child, which is represented by the Divine Mother, Aset, or uh, Eteru, or the one the Greeks call Isis, and uh, Asa, the male, or Osiris, and Eru, or Horus, or the hero. So our trinity is made of a man and a woman. It is not a man and a man it is not a woman and a woman okay I have to say this because for good reasons many people are trying to infiltrate African spirituality right now to to destroy it to poison it to pollute it to corrupt it so that they can destroy this powerful foundation if they can destroy it then they can get to the root of the destruction of everything about African spirituality that's why we must keep standing by the truth that's why we must keep saying the truth. Many people have tried, and these gay people, LGBT, they are so aim is to poison African spirituality by changing this, this fundamental truth to either a feminine 
uh, supreme extreme divine mother concepts or a gay concept this is their aim so we should never give in to them okay i keep saying this because i have been attacked severally concerning this and uh, i will still say the truth okay it is the truth it is not me that wrote it it is nature that wrote it so our foundation is based on the heterosexual relationship of a man and a woman if not because of a man and a woman coming together my father and my mother poking i will not be here today okay all of you watching me will not be here today so two men cannot produce children no matter how hard they try two women cannot still produce children no matter how hard or how soft they try so let it be clear if we believe or agree with this obsession then we can move on with the rest of the topic of what i want to say today so uh, in african spirituality in the issue of sex there's a deity that we have that is responsible for this very sexual uh, department and this deity in ancient egypt is uh, referred to as a uh, heteru that is an ancient name that name is over 250,000 years old according to scientific documentation but if we go further that name is more than 10 million years old it is not today's name that deity can very well be traced to almost the beginning of time she is the divine mother the mother of Africa she is the black woman that bettered the African race okay as symbolism is a cow with a horn and a son digs it's a rule the name means house of a rule the house of a rule she is in charge of fertility prosperity and sex and everything that have to do with sex procreation children pleasure music song dance creativity imagination this is our department so anything that have to do with sex belongs to her okay later on she uh morphed into asa uh or set which is now isis and isis have the same responsibility she's in charge of that sexual department okay so everything that have to do with sex you want to find it with her in west africa we have the deity called oshun the divine mother the goddess of fresh water she's also in charge of that sexual department love sex pleasure creativity music imagination wealth and prosperity fertility we have her uh, we also have um, yemuja we also have oh yeah we also have uh, all the female deities they also partake in this responsibility as well okay so this is why the major reason when you go to the temple of this deity especially in ancient egypt you're going to see uh part of what you will see in the temple are rituals of sex or uh, different rites for sex for manifestation for fertility for pleasure for procreation okay so you want to find them um, as part of this phenomenon you will see people young men and women or people that are dedicated to our worship to our veneration to our upliftment these are people you refer to as a uh, temple women or temple men okay i won't want to use the term prostitute they are not prostitute and uh, even if we use that term in african spirituality uh prostitution is not seen as a evil thing it is not a sinful thing okay when done in a religious context in a religious or spiritual context there's nothing wrong about it okay what you have in these temples is that uh, you're going to see women young women them see sexy beautiful women and young men sometimes these are people that are dedicated themselves to the veneration of this deity body spirit and soul okay so you see them all around the temple they help with temple walk do things they clean the temple or uh, prepare food or go on errands attend to people they also perform sexual services as well this uh, is necessary for people that have issues uh maybe these are men that are not married or these are people that are 
want to kind of experience a have a, another experience, a good experience or entertainment purposes that are looking for that kind of thing, they can be able to go to this temple to get that entertainment or to satisfy themselves. And uh, people normally go to these temples for these kind of things. It is uh, common and normal in uh, ancient Africa and it still happens today, even in West Africa. Okay, the essence of this is that uh, this... Uh, kind of balances the society it kind of bring them um, peace and harmony and social interaction in the in the society what it brings is that it brings this kind of a uh, party spirit or socialization like as in when we have clubs today a place where people can go to chill out to enjoy themselves to have a good time to relax after working very very hard after all the stress of life or going to work from Monday to Friday, you want to relax your body, you want to go to party. People go to these temples, you will see these women there, and they are always there. They, are, they will help you, they help with them psychological issues for the men or for other fellow women. They help to kind of offer services which uh, include uh, sex, uh, massage, or chemotherapy, or spa, or any kind of things to make you relax. These uh, girls are trained in all these aspects, and this is the work that they do. So people go there to get these services, and you're going to find it in the temple. You're going to find this practice in the temple of Atoll. You will find this uh, in the temple of uh, Heteru. You'll find this in the temple of Isis. When you come to West Africa, you're going to find this in uh, Oshun Shrine. People still do them till today. If you are familiar with uh, African spirituality in Nigeria and you have been to multiple shrines, you will discover that uh, you go to some shrines, you see girls that are hanging around, young girls, and they are very, very willing to date you. This is very normal. You go there one or two, you must see some girls that will be smiling very, very uh, broadly at you. And uh, before you know, you can easily change numbers and you start dating these girls. It is normal in Nigeria to see this kind of situation okay these are girls that they work they also work for the shrine do things as well and uh, they also offer this kind of services we don't see it as a evil thing like a sinful thing it is uh, something that is necessary for the society to to go to keep going around for activities to be created okay it is something that is very very normal this uh, service is rendered in the sense that uh, a lot of people may not have a uh, lot of sexual experience and they want to learn or they want to know how to do these kind of things or they want to feel connected to the society. They can patronize the temple for this kind of services and they get it from there. And uh, it is very good uh, benefit in the sense that these girls you see here, most of them are dedicated. They have the spirit of the deity inside them. They are not uh, ordinary girls, okay? This is like their life purpose. This is what they came to do in this life. Not all women are supposed to get married. Not all women will get married. So marriage is not, it's not the end point for women, okay? So uh, we have this kind of thing present in African spirituality and uh, it is not a bad thing it is not a bad thing it is part of life and uh, it solves many problems for men that are widowed or men that don't want to get married due to one thing or another or men that are having difficulty expressing their sexual feelings or their, their, their sexual uh, energy or whatever they feel they want to express they can do it with these women. Most of these women, they are very skilled in sex. They study the uh, different positions, different ways of pleasing men. They are very, very good. In fact, the spirit is inside them. You will see they are possessed by this spirit. This is their work. They know how to please men, how to get you in the mood, how to make you feel very, very good. Okay, they have the spirit inside them. This is the work that they came to do in this life. So you're gonna see them in the temples in the ancient times. And uh, this is the work that they do, okay? 
this practice, uh, you're going to find it all over the world. You will find it in ancient Greek. In fact, the ancient Greeks they copied it. You will see it heavily practiced in the temple of um, of uh, Bacchus, the temple of uh, Aphrodite in uh, in Greece. Uh, Aphrodite is you're going to find this their practice in the temple of Aphrodite in ancient Greece. You will see this uh, many times. Uh, they will organize parties for socialization, especially they call it fertility ceremony before the planting season. There will be a lot of alcohol and food and there will be a lot of people coming in. They will drink and they will have a great time and people will meet, make contact with each other and they will naturally have sex. So this is very normal. In ancient Egypt, they do this a lot in uh, the Temple of Isis. They do this a lot. Even the goddess Bas, that's uh, the goddess of Black Panther. They also do these ceremonies in our uh, in temple as well. You can find written records of this all over uh, ancient Egypt. It is a very common practice. It's a practice of fertility, a practice of people coming together for socialization meeting each other and of course having sex to produce offsprings and uh, make the community grow larger and continuation of human people upon these heads. So it is not a bad practice, it is part of our uh, practice, uh, African spiritual practices, okay? You will find this today in Nigeria, you go to a lot of temples, you will always see some girls hanging around. They also offer this kind of services as well, even though they do it discreetly, but uh, it is normal. Okay, we know about this stuff, and uh, it is not it's not something that is bad. I don't see it as evil thing. As far as the people are not forced into the practice, these people they are not forced into. They came to this life. It is they are they are destiny to do it. Okay, they came to this life to do it. They are not. It's not human trafficking. It's not uh, a forced desire. They go there willingly and they offer these services, and uh, they are happy. And everybody is happy. So this is how it is in our African spirituality. Then uh, we also have uh, the issue of uh, ritual sex of empowerment. This is uh, an issue whereby people use sexual rights for manifestation. We have this in African spirituality as well. Due to the power that you can find in a sexual energy, uh, it is a very, very... Uh, useful right for manifestation manifestation of uh, prosperity or setting goals this involve uh, the coming together of two couples two willing couples in um, in a setting ritualistic uh, settings whereby they agree to manifest certain things in their life and uh, during the act of uh, sexual intercourse they can be able to climax and imagine or see the outcome of what they want happening so they push that um, energy into that manifestation base or that uh, place that they have imagined in their mind they push it into that very uh, vision that they have been able to concord in their mind's eye and they try to get that energy and push it there uh, during the point of climax to release it so that it can as that climax is releasing that vision that, that that idea that they want to see manifest we also activate or release as well so it's a form of um, sexual manifestation too you can use it for that kind of thing and uh, people use it for that kind of thing then we have solo manifestation this is a situation whereby uh, a person can actually uh, stimulate their self to the process of climax then they can also imagine an outcome then during the time of release they can also push their mind or their vision to explode that idea into reality as well so people also practice this kind of things you're going to find this practice a lot in uh, western occultism western occultism they do this kind of practice a lot. Some people also do this uh, by releasing into a CJ, but we don't really do that in African spirituality. But uh, you find that in a Western occultism, they're releasing to CJs all the time. With the answer, the hope is that they're giving this sexual energy to the deity for manifestation or for greater contact. 
So this is a very common practice in Western occultism, but uh, we don't really do that in our know, African spirituality. Okay, so you're going to find this kind of uh, acts of uh, this kind of sex acts of manifestation. Then uh, in our uh, tantra in Hinduism, where they have the phenomenon they call them tantra. This is a uh, sacred sex out of people trying to do. Uh, different just call it sexual yoga it is practically sexual yoga according to them it is uh, people practicing different kind of positions for spiritual enlightenment is uh, like enlightenment through sex okay so they believe that uh, by doing different positions they can be able to achieve enlightenment by doing different sex positions and climaxing inside that kind of position, they will achieve greater union with their partner, greater understanding with their partner, greater uh, spiritual or emotional or love connection with their partner, and uh, greater happiness for them as well. So they have this um, whole book that they're written that called the Kama Sutra, which involves shows you different styles or different techniques on how to achieve a greater union with the divinity through the act of sexual copulation or intercourse. So they have this practice. It's a very heavy practice in Hinduism. But uh, you're going to find this practice of not only Hinduism, if you check uh, also in uh, Sumerian, Babylon, and some other part of the world, you're going to find this, but uh, the Hindus take it very, very seriously. And uh, we have the good side and also the bad side of this. The good side is that uh, when you practice this kind of uh, activity, that is uh, this kind of phenomenon where you go to temples, it's a good way of actually getting a better connection with the temple. When you go to temple, you have like a day a girl there or one or two girls. You actually patronize the services of the temple. You are actually uh, bringing finance to the temple. When you organize, you're actually encouraging the activities to keep the temple running. And uh, most of these temple girls, they are at least they have where they have where they belong to. It's also like um, becoming venerating the deity. Sometimes these girls have the deity inside them. By you uh, sleeping with them, you are also kind of making a closer contact with that spirit, with that deity. And uh, the deity can be able to have greater activity in your life as well. And uh, by you also going to the temple, you also learn many things. A lot of these girls that teach, they are very good in the acts of sex. They uh, can actually bring a lot of happiness or teach you many things that you can learn about the activity because this is their kind of job as well and uh, the girls they are not uh, like street girls they are actually clean they take care of themselves they are very very well taken care of okay the girls that are not uh, any kind of girls they are actually selected they are not any kind of Tom Dick and Harry they are actually very beautiful women okay beautiful women sometimes men marry these women the women are not supposed to be married, but uh, if a man likes them and uh, you say you must marry them, there are certain rights that will be done for the lady to be married to you. They have to do some certain rights, rituals, to release that lady to you so that the lady can be able to stay in your house and uh, fulfill the roles of a, of a wife to you so that she will not be going out. So people marry them. Okay, they are actually good women. They are women that are very skilled. They know how to cook. They know how to take care of the house. They know how to do things. They have a lot of skills. And they surely know how to have sex, how to please men. So, in the ancient times, this kind of women are actually sought after. In ancient Egypt, people actually go to these temples to marry these girls. In fact, they are in very, very high demands because they know a lot of things. So men actually go after these girls for wives than a regular uh, damsel that does not know anything. Okay, because these women have a lot of experience and uh, they are very, very uh, vast in knowledge and wisdom 
all kinds of hacks, they know how to do spells, they know how to do things. They are very good. They learn all these things in the temple. So these are not just um, wayward girls or girls that uh, <laughs> that have no value. They really have value. Okay, so they are sought after. People marry them. Okay, so this is the way they are in ancient Africa. They, so they are very good things. These are the good things to benefits of the practice. Nowadays, uh, the practice have been abused. If you go to some of these temples now, some of these girls that they might want to give you might be girls that they want to use to tie you to the temple so that they can control you to get money out of you. So uh, some people have abused this practice. Then uh, there's something you're going to find in our uh, African spirituality now, which is uh, is the abuse of our uh, sexual rights. You will see a situation whereby a woman might go to a native doctor, a DPR, to say that they need children. They don't have children. They need fruit of the womb. Instead of the DPR to do practical spells, some of these bad spiritualists, we say that in order for the woman to be pregnant, they have to sleep with the woman, to impregnate the woman. So we have seen many of these cases like this, whereby evil or spiritualists, try to deceive women or even deceive women to sleep with them because the woman is looking for the fruit of the womb. We see this uh, in African spirituality. We also see this a lot in Christianity. A lot of women that are looking for children, these are fine advantage for the pastor, these uh, men of dogs to, to sleep with them, telling them they have holy sperm, divine sperm that once they sleep with you once, you will get pregnant automatically. And uh, a lot of gullible women actually believe this trash. They tell the woman, see, I have five children. If I sleep with any woman, she will get pregnant. God has blessed me. If I sleep with you, just once you will, must, you must get pregnant. And this woman will go and open her leg for this uh, man of dog. So they do this a lot in uh, Christianity. And some evil spiritualists also do this a lot. So uh, there are many herbs that women can use for getting pregnant you do not have to sleep with any babalao to get pregnant okay so if anybody is saying that you must sleep with them before you get pregnant just know that it is a uh, it is rightfully a scam and uh, you should not do that most cases these women are actually blackmailed when they sleep with this person there will be a recording then we start blackmailing the woman to send them money the woman cannot talk this is how that we destroy the life of the person. A lot of women have been blackmailed with this kind of things by the so-called men of dogs. They have recordings of women they have slept with. So the women cannot say anything. After taking money from the woman, they sleep with the woman, they record the sex acts. The woman keeps quiet forever and they go on parading themselves. If you talk, they expose the tape. They have done this. I have seen tapes of man of uh, man of dog sleeping with a woman i have that kind of tape in a computer building a married woman they record the thing the woman did not know it was recorded and they circulated this video on on the internet there are many cases of this in nigeria so you have that you need to warn your people there's a lot of blackmail going on with this kind of hero stuff so you have to be careful so uh, for sex ritual for manifestation uh, these are rituals that uh, I will encourage to be done by you and your husband or you and somebody that is uh, very, very close together. Somebody that you know that you really love and they love you and uh, you want to build your life together. Okay, because this kind of ritual settings, sex is a very powerful medium for draining energy because you release energy uh, out of your body. Somebody that is evil, that have vampiric nature can actually use this hack to take something from you to drain some of your life energy and use it for their own purpose or their own evil purpose some people do that this uh, involve the person actually after the heart of sex they will take the semen of the man or the woman they will clean it or take the tissue paper they will use it to go and do some evil rituals for money for prosperity for anything they want to do they can be able to abuse this kind of thing. So you have to be careful with uh, the kind of people you sleep with. So because sex is a very, very intimate heart. 
and uh, apart from the issue of sexually transmitted disease uh, your semen is just like your blood it can be used for many kind of things it can be used for evil things it can be used against you it can be used to cause so many problems so you should be careful with uh, the kind of people you go out with so people can you have this dubious character especially somebody saying you want you will have sex with them to get this to get that this is a very very dangerous move uh, and something you should be quite worried about in a uh, tantra now in uh, india what you're going to find is that uh, there's a big business uh in the area of tantra a very big business there there are some um, hindu spiritualists that actually advocating this and uh, they try to hoodwink women, especially naive or uh, gullible Western women, into this practice. They claim that uh, you, it is the fastest way to achieve uh, gnosis, the fastest way to achieve uh, divine knowledge, divine power, that uh, if they sleep with you in a ritual settings, you are, they are going to open your third eye, all your chakras will be activated. There have been materials or uh, books that have been written on this that they have secret or uh, arcane uh, techniques for actually uh, making somebody come online spiritually by sleeping with them. That they have made certain rights. For me, all these things are scams. I don't think that uh, you can actually uh, achieve liberation or empowerment through sex, but uh, for that, it needs to come on its own naturally. Sex is not something that uh, people have to study a lot to know how to do it. It is something that is natural to us. It is not rocket science for crying out loud. Okay, it's not rocket science. So if somebody is posing that they are like a sexual guru, that <laughs> if you have to sleep with them to receive enlightenment, it is probably a scam. So... A lot of them are into this thing, into this tantra. They call themselves tantra masters, and uh, they get a lot of women to sleep with them. For me, these are men that love sex a lot, and uh, they want to use it as an opportunity to have sex with a lot of women as possible. So they claim they offer these services that uh, if your woman sleeps with them, she will achieve automatic sexual enlightenment. So you're going to find this practice a lot in Hinduism in India. You go online, you're going to see them. We have a lot of these sexual yogis. They claim that they are very healthy. They are vegetarians. They are very pure. They are holy at all. They have holy, holy sex. These people, you're going to see them in the yoga feed with different uh, yoga postures every day, stretching themselves, doing different kinds of things. Uh, this is the what they practice. For me, I... It's another form of um, gigolo. Let me call this a Hindu gigolo, spiritual gigolo, or gigolo. Okay? Now, code that shower that they do. So, or uh, sugar mommy rackets. Uh, they come wrap them inside. Tantra. These women actually pay these gurus for this and sexual stuff. So, it's actually a form of a um, sacred prostitution. Uh, this is their own form in Hinduism. Uh, if you tell me that uh, you want to have sex for pleasure or you want to learn about sex, uh, I will understand. But uh, if you tell me that you want to get enlightenment from having sex, you're going to get spiritual enlightenment and your third eye will be activated. And that is something that uh, uh, we beg to differ on. Okay? But whatever the case, People do these practices. You need to know about them. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, and uh, I won't condemn. I won't. I won't condemn them. As far as the two people involved or the multiple people involved, they are consenting adults. They agree to do this thing. Then uh, who am I to talk against it? I have not no place to say. So people do this practice. Okay, it can involve two people. It can involve four people, three people. They do different sort of practices there. So uh, it's not my business actually, but I just want you guys to know this kind of things happen. It happen in the world. So we have a um, different kind of um, sexual rituals. Uh, you can do that for empowerment. You can also do them for enlightenment to know more about the topic. 
there are some people that uh, are interested in the subject of sex and they really want to practice it this is a very good avenue for them to practice it probably maybe in a safe spare or no, in a sort of spiritual situation if you are like that kind of person i don't see any reason you cannot go for it but uh, in african spirituality our own system is different the rule of sex uh, it has actually been diminished it's not that uh, come on the way it is in the ancient time anymore so what you're going to find is uh, just girls in the temple and uh, some of these girls are there to do different sort of things and quite naturally what I just said they perform these services and uh, it's okay so you're going to find this practice in African spirituality we don't view it as a evil practice we don't see it as a bad thing we don't uh, necessarily view prostitution as a bad thing in African spirituality. It is uh, what, it, as far as you are an adult, you want to do this with your life. Uh, I don't think anybody should be able to tell you what to do with your life. As far as the person is not forced into this, uh, this practice, and uh, this is what they want to do. I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, so uh, I believe uh, this is my take on the issue. Questions or comments are welcome. If you guys have any question, this is the time to ask the question. Okay. So apart from that, I'll be rounding up. So for people that want to do ritual for manifestation, sex ritual for manifestation, there are different ways people do this kind of thing. Uh, you can do this during the full moon, especially the full moon. You can do this uh, by invoking the deity, preparing a uh, rite. Maybe people you are looking for the fruit of the womb or you want a kind of particular shite. You want a shite that will be spiritually inclined. Okay, you can do give an offering to the deity uh, at all or hate a uh, People also do this with Lilith. Lilith is like um, the dark aspect of uh, hate a or at all. She is a... Uh, the aspect that have been bastardized by Judaism. You know that when the colonizer, colonizers came to Africa, in order for them to demonize our gods, they need to give them bad name. They need to paint them as demons, as ugly, twisted, evil, creatures, caricatures. Same way they call us the N-word. They also call our deities all sort of devious bad names. So the deity Lilith is a uh, a the is a uh, a kind of a uh, derogated form of the divine mother, okay. And they still reach out to the deity in that derogated form because that is the only way they understand. They cannot really interact with anything pure uh, because a lot of white people they are not pure. They have a negative spirit. So. Most times, the way they deal with our African deities is uh, by disparaging them, by dealing with them in the uh, derogated forms that they have created in their minds. Like you see, like a uh, deity like Amera, they cannot deal with Amera. They have to change it to Lucifer and say that it's a fallen angel, that they write a backstory, that he fall from heaven, he did this and did that. They are not trying to deal with Lucifer. And the original deity is Hamera, which is the light bringer, the unborn one. But they cannot deal with him directly. Dealing with him directly, we actually prove that they are acknowledging the black, the power of the African deity. It proves that they are acknowledging the supremacy of the African deity. So they cannot deal with him directly because they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to accept this. They don't want to talk about this truth so that we'll be talking about Lucifer this is our evil uh, a lot of Caucasian have same thing with the divine mother they cannot deal with us it's a rule as it's a rule they cannot deal with us at all because it will be acknowledging the supremacy and the origin of the African goddess so they have to degrade her to this uh, thing they called Lilith and they give her a lot of bad names, so that is the only way they can deal with her. So in Western occultism, you'll be seeing them talking about Lily, talking about Lucifer, talking about them. As I was talking about our deities with different names that they have 
uh, perverted, that they have uh, convoluted, that they have destroyed, and expecting these deities to still bless them and give them more power to destroy African people. This is the way the white people think. This is the, the mentality of uh, Western occultists, of Western black magicians. This is the way they think. They are, many of them are full of hate. They are full of um, jealousy. They are full of envy. And these are people that have uh, resigned not to promote or support anything that we advance the spirituality of the African people. But they still want to benefit from it. It's like they are planning to erase us from this planet then, assume our position in this kind of um, way, which will not happen. So people do this um, rites with uh, Lilith. You can do it with Hathor. You can do it with uh, with Isis in the form of Isis, even with Hamera. This rite involves um, giving uh, offerings to a male and female deity. Uh, it can be Amera and Heteru, or okay, Amera and uh, Asset. And uh, doing the rites in the full moon, or you can do it uh, in conjunction with the water rite for, for fertility, uh, especially with Oshun, it has to be a water rite, and uh, mostly on a Friday. And uh, then you perform the act. The act also involves a uh, commingling of the sexual fluid of both people and Sometimes it can be burning it or can simply be other means that I may not want to mention here. But uh, it works. It's a very good rite, a very powerful rite. And uh, people do it. So it's normal in our uh, African spirituality. Okay, this is not a big deal. We have uh, sex rites and uh, we have this so called uh, phenomenon of uh, temple girls, you know, shrine girls in African spirituality. If you patronize, our shrines, we see these girls hanging around. Okay, it is normal. It is part of the culture, it is part of the tradition, it is part of African spirituality. Okay, so uh, it's something that uh, you're going to find here, especially in temples of Oshun, you're going to find this a lot. There are women that their destiny is to do this right and uh, to do this kind of lifestyle. So, this is what they came to this life to do. Okay. So uh, this is what I have to say today on this topic. Questions or comments are welcome. Please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell close to the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get my videos as soon as I release them. And uh, if you want to read my book on quantum physics and African spirituality, I still have the book here uh, waiting for you. You can contact me. I'll uh, put my number on this video and I'll We'll talk there then if you want to learn african spirituality you can contact me on this channel my website is uh, already currently going to uh, transform transferring to a new domain so it's going to take some time to get there probably next week it will go to the new domain about a week or so so i'm transferring it there then um if you want to do your spells love spell exes packs or uh, Oracle Tarot readings. My number is also under this video. You can contact me. I will do this stuff for you. Then uh, apart from that, I wish you a very wonderful day. And uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video as usual. So take care and bye. Peace.